um, some recording now. Uh, so just for the recording, uh, we were looking at the Reprex package, which is a package by Jenny Bryan from our studio, which is going to be useful for uh, making small reproducible examples. Okay. So the main, we've already saw that you can install it with install the packages, uh, uh, Reprex. This is really the version you want to install, the, the release version. You don't want to use any other um, versions. So how, how can you actually use this? So um, the idea is that uh, uh, if you want other people to help you fast, um, first of all, you want to try to like um, uh, document all the steps of what you did, right? So that risk normally involves having, um, um, you know, some R code, right? Um, that documents all the steps that you did, um, such that people can help you, right? So um, uh, let's just use the basic example here, which is uh, we assign a variable uh, one of four and we compute the mean, right? And maybe, uh, maybe we wanna ask, uh, maybe we wanna ask why is the mean 2.5 and not three, right? Maybe that's a question we wanna ask, right? So something that people uh, typically will do is they will select the code that they ran, copy that, and then um, let's say on, on one of our help desk channels, they'll be like, uh, you know, they'll paste that, right? Uh, on Slack. Um, and they'll be like, okay, like, you know, uh, why is the mean tree, right? Uh, sorry, not tree. Um, um, and so they might do that, right? What is the problem with this, right? I'm not actually gonna pose this, <laughs> right? What is the problem with this? It's like, um, so let's say, I mean, Let's say, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, let's say Nina looks at, at my question, right? And Nina is like, how can I help Leo with the question, right? Um, so if Nina sees that code, right? Um, she'll be like, maybe I need to run some code myself, right? Maybe, maybe this code is, uh, is um, it's not clear to me exactly what the object Y is or, or all of those things. So maybe she opens R, right? Uh, and then it's like, um, she you know, wants to copy paste the code, right? What is the problem at this point? Uh, well, you're copying, you're not copying code anymore. You're copying text that looks like code, but like these greater than symbols, those are called the R command prompt. And so if you try to execute that, it is like, oh, I don't know what, you know, there's some errors here, right? So let's, if Nina actually wants to run this code that, you know, uh, Leo asked, she has to you know, copy and paste every line of the code. And this is like simple code for it's a single line, right? But it could be, uh, it could be stuff like this. Uh, oops. And so, you know, if, if Nina wants to help with this, she has to figure out that she has to copy that part of the code that doesn't have the greater than, then she has to copy the part of the code that doesn't have the plus sign. But like, you know, if there's a GGplot2 code, there might be some plus signs that are actual valid code. And then that parenthesis, sorry, that um, that bracket. Um, so this is, you know, quite a bit of work. Um, it makes it hard for people to help. So, um, and this is such a common scenario where like people will like post, they're like, oh, I, you know, I posted the code online. I gave you everything you need. You know, here you can see, here you can recreate the white object. I gave you all the code that I ran. I mean, I'm even giving you the output of what it was, right? It should be really easy for you to try to help me, right? So how can we make it easier? So that's where the uh, Reprex package comes into play. Um, so I'm gonna load that package. Um, 
And so, uh, I'm just going to, um, you know, copy the lines of code from my console. This is Leo you know, that has a problem and wants to ask a question. I'll copy those lines of code. And then once I copy them, I can run the reprex function without any arguments. Um, and you'll see it's doing some stuff in the, in, in the back. Um, and what it opened a little website here on the RStudio um, viewer panel on my right side, which if I click over here on the showing you window symbol, I can see it on the, on the actual browser. Um, and uh, this file is actually you know, a temporary file, but it says like, oh, here's the code you can copy and paste, right? Um, so you can copy and paste this code now. And uh, Leo that is asking the question on Slack or, uh, or a different tool um, can still do y is the mean 2.5 and not three. And then let's say Nina sees the question and she's like, oh, I wanna like, you know, uh, run the same code. Maybe I need to look at the objects a little bit more, um, things like that. So she can copy paste the code that Leo wrote, go to her R uh, and paste it. And this will actually run, right? So what is Reprex doing? Um, I only, uh, Leo copy pasted the greater than uh, y arrow one to four, greater than mean uh, parenthesis y. Um, the reprex function, what it did was like, it recognized what parts are R code, what parts are not R code, uh, and reran it itself on a new version of, on a new um, session of R uh, behind the scenes. Once you had the output of that new session of R, he made it into a little, into a tiny temporary website, such that you can easily copy and paste the output from that little temporary website. Or you could, I mean, you don't want to take a screenshot because then like Nina can't help you. <laughs> you take a screenshot then that like Nina can't even copy paste the code, right? But, um, um, and so that's the idea of this uh, reprex package. It has a couple more um, things, but that's the basic of it. And, um, and, the function that we use is the reprex function. Uh, this package has more functions. So I'm going to just open the first, the help file for the reprex function and see what other options it has. And so right now, without any, when I ran it without any arguments, reprex parentheses, what it did was it read from the clipboard, right? Because I had copied the code that I wanted to ask. Um, but it can also read from, you know, a, you're opening our, if you have our studio open. Um, so let me just change my clipboard to, uh, I'm gonna copy that. Uh, but let, let me just select a couple lines here. Reprex, in theory, I think, um, maybe I need to actually give it an argument. Um, we'll see what it's doing. Oh, so I did use the clipboard, sorry. Um, I guess if I wanted to use the RStudio session that I have, um, we might need to change some argument, but you can do it. Um, so, uh, okay. So um, you can also give it an actual input X. Um, and then you could also say what type of file um, you want to uh, reprex to produce, you can say like, I want to actually generate a .r file that I can use later. Um, uh, um, you could also say like, uh, I want it to be like the Git flavor, uh, flavor version of Markdown or other file formats like Stack Overflow Markdown. Um, that's like, if you already know where you want to ask your question, right? But you don't, in general, you don't need to get that complicated. You just need to use, copy the code you want to ask and done, and then run the reprex function in order to get a website like this that you can then copy paste the code to. Um, so 
the details of what is actually doing this reflex function uh, package is actually um, uh, so it does um, parse the text that you gave it. It removes anything that is not needed, like the greater than symbols. Um, but then it also runs it in a, in our R markdown version, but it changes the R prompt instead of the greater than. You made it. You made the R prompt to be uh, hashtag greater than, such that um, the output would appear as um, as um, as a comment in R, right? So it's just like doing some little tricks there. And so that's that's how beautiful this little package is. Now, the problem really here comes: what is the part? What is the? What did you learn about this package and the reflex function? The main problem is the previous part, which is having a small block of code that you want to share, right? Um, and so, because uh, it has to run it again, right? And like, let let's say let's try this. Um, um, I copy the G ranges um, command. Then I run the reprex function. And uh, what do we see on the little website? It tells us like error, could not find the function G ranges, right? Why is that an error, right? Because this is running, um, this is running valid our code uh, on a new R session, right? It's it's not completely valid because we haven't like, uh, we, we didn't include the, the line of code to load the package um, in order to make the example fully reproducible. Um, so now I can copy those two lines. So I like them, copy them, run reprex. Um, is running a new R session with the uh, lines of code that I gave it. And now I'm gonna open that on my browser. And now it's like, oh, okay, loading the package, a bunch of messages from loading that big package, and then the function itself. And here I made a syntax error. I missed the column before the plus. That's why we're getting an error. But um, 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 but like you know that could be the example, right? That that could be the situation where someone is like like Leo is asking Nina like, oh, why am I getting an error here, right? And then Nina is like, oh, look at it, uh, like you, you have a syntax error here. You're missing the column before the strand symbol. Um, um, and so this this is also. Um, uh, great for learning uh, what parts of code are needed for people to to uh, to help you, because uh, someone could just have uh, you know Leo could have just paste it to Nina, um, uh, uh, Leo could just could just have pasted like this stuff to Nina, right? Um, uh, the greater than space G ranges chromosome one, column one dash 1000 plus. Um, but, um, but then Nina would have been like, oh, I don't know where this function comes from, right? What packages does this come from, right? That's why you need to include the library statements too, like, the, like uh, what packages you're actually using. Um, and all of this is just to try to make it easier for other people to help you faster, right? Um, so, um, uh, so those are the main advantages of this um, reprex package. Um, um, so I don't know if you have any questions about it. I was kind of wondering how this would show up on um, like if you're running something on the cluster and you didn't have like the RStudio GUI, um, what that would look like. 
my so let's let's do that actually so uh, i'm gonna open the terminal um, panel from my r studio um, i'm gonna log into the cluster request a computer node with pure sh um, Um, let's open R here. So, um, one way you could do things is um, um, uh, if you have the packages uh, installed in your own computer, right? And run the reprex in your computer. So, let's say, let's make a new example. Mm, um, mm, Right, well, let's see. Um, oh. uh, well, I'm thinking of complicated examples in my mind. Sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to the original uh, short example. Right. Um, so um, let's say we're working on the terminal and we see an error, right? And we want to ask help for, help for it, right? Um, so here I'm going to select those lines, copy them. Then on my console pane, I can run a uh, reprex, right? And so for this to work, I have to have the packages also installed in my laptop. Um, uh, and then it will make the little website. Right? Um, now, if I wanted to run to run this on the cluster, then we need to use the actual full syntax of reprex. Um, um, for let's see. I think we need to give the full thing as um, um ask me if I want to open the out file. I'm going to say no, but I know where this is. Um, okay, so just create like the. Final yeah, so let's see. Um, a segmentation fault issue there. Mm. Um, I'm just trying to copy it, please, uh, to sync it. No, it doesn't exist anymore. Uh-oh. Uh, all right. We ran into a complicated situation, and I had a, you know, something completely failed. But, like, um, shouldn't be the case. And uh, maybe, maybe I need to play around a bit more to actually get this up and running on the cluster. Um, 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 but we should be able to find a way to make it work. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and that could be just based on, uh, I'm using like a, a beta, version, beta version of uh, RStudio, so maybe I have a problem there. Um, um, but um, in theory, you could also run it on the cluster. But uh, I mean, what I would probably do is, I like to keep the same packages that I have installed on the cluster also on my computer, because um, that way I can open like the help file uh, a lot nicer. Um, I, can op I can open them like, um, on my computer instead of like opening them in the terminal. 
uh, well, in my case, I already have all this stuff installed to make it easier to look on the terminal. But uh, 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 sorry, I have too much stuff uh, configured to make it work. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, So let me stop recording.